In this third video on integration by parts, we're going to look at two of the special cases and we'll just see on how to approach definite integrals using integration by parts. So the first one we're looking at is finding the antiderivative of lin x. Now we know how to differentiate lin x. The derivative of lin x is 1 over x, but the antiderivative of lin x is not one of our standard integrals. So we're going to use integration by parts. Even though it does not look like the product of two functions, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to say, let u be equal to lin x. Now the reason I choose u equal to lin x is because I can differentiate lin x. And then dv is just the dx portion. So if u is lin x, then du is 1 over x dx. If dv is dx, then v is just x. We use our integration by parts, and we've got u times v. So it's x lin x minus the integral of v du, x times 1 over x dx. So let's tidy it up. It's x lin x minus the integral of 1 dx. So that gives me x lin x minus x plus c. And that is the antiderivative of lin x. Now remember, you can use differentiation to test your answer. Differentiate this final answer. If you differentiate x lin x minus x plus c, you should get lin x back. You can do that with all your integration examples. You can find the derivative and check that you got it right. So that is using integration by parts to find the antiderivative of lin x. Now, just to remind you, the inverse trig functions, we also have derivatives of the inverse trig functions handy, but we do not have antiderivatives. So we're going to use the exact same technique. So let's look at, look, at the, look at the integral of inverse sine or arc sine x or theta d theta. We're going to do the same thing. I know how to differentiate arc sine. So I'm going to let u be equal to arc sine of theta d theta. And then d, uh, arc sine of theta and then dv is just d theta. So if u is arc sine theta, then du is the derivative of arc sine. So it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus theta squared. If v is dv is d theta, then v is theta. So let's see where this gets us. Go back to my formula, u times v. So it's theta times arc sine theta minus the integral of v du. I'm just going to multiply it like that. Theta over 1 minus minus theta squared, and here I missed out on the d theta, so there it goes. All right, now that is not a standard integral, but if you've done substitution and integration, you can see that that theta is in a certain form the derivative of the 1 minus theta squared. Now I've already used u, so I can't use u again, so let's choose a different variable. Let p be equal to 1 minus theta squared, dp is then minus 2 theta d theta. Now I've got a theta d theta, so that's minus a half dp. So going back to my integral, this first part stays the same. Minus. Then I've got minus a half times the integral of 1 over root p dp. So that gives me theta times arc sine theta plus a half times the antiderivative of the root p. So that's p to the power minus a half. So if I add one to that, I get p to the power a half. So that's times 2 p to the power a half plus c. So we can change that back to theta. That's theta times inverse sine of theta plus the square root of p. So that's the square root of 1 minus theta squared plus c. So that's how we find the antiderivative of inverse sine. Now it's not as straightforward as finding the antiderivative of lin of x, but it, we're still using integration by parts, but we had to do a substitution as well. So let's talk about definite integrals. Definite integrals, the story stays the same. If I want to use integration by parts and I've got a definite integral, we're going to treat it the same as we treat definite integrals of standard integrals using this formula. So let's look at a familiar one. We've just seen how to find the antiderivative of lin x dx. 
So the definite integral from one of two, one to two of the antiderivative of lin of x dx, we're going to use integration by parts again. But before we do that, just a word of warning: you need to look at these limits of integration and just make sure your function is defined on them. Because lin of x, if I just sketch lin of x, it looks like this, where that is one. That's lin of x. So lin of x is defined from 1 to 2, so there's no problem. But if I ask for the integral from 0 to 2, we had to treat, would have to treat that differently. Then it would become what we call an improper integral. And we will look at that in another set of videos. So we can carry on. Now, we've seen with integration by parts that the antiderivative of lin of x is just x lin x minus x. So I'm not going to do that again. It's just at the start of this video. So what we'll have is an x lin x, but now it must be between 2 and 1. Minus x between 2 and 1. So that's the only difference. We're going to substitute the 2 and 1 in there. So that's not so complicated. So that's 2 lin 2 minus 1 lin 1 minus 2 minus 1. So that gives me 2 lin 2. Now lin of 1 is 0, and that's minus 1. All right, so we're going to treat it exactly the same way. If it's a definite integral, we must just remember to substitute. And we obviously do not need the C because it's a definite integral, so we're calculating a real value. And that is integration by parts.